Welcome to Electroline. In our quest to understand electromagnetic radiation better, let's talk about it in terms of waves. Now we know what a wave looks like. It's simply a, a wave motion like this. We can think of this as an ocean wave or a string that's moving along because somebody is pulling the string up and down like this. And every wave has what we call a wavelength. It's the distance from the peak of one wave to the peak of the next wave. That's called a wavelength. We use the letter lambda to indicate wavelength. Typically also, waves have velocity. They move at a certain speed. And of course, when, it talk, when we talk about electromagnetic radiation, the velocity is equal to the speed of light. The speed of light, C, is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second. And waves also have what we call frequency, the rate at which the oscillations go up and down. So the number of oscillations per second is called the frequency, how fast do the oscillations occur. Now, to give you an example of how that compares, let's talk about visible light. Visible light has a wavelength of about 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which is about 500 nanometers. That's pretty small, because a nanometer, let's say you need 1,000 nanometers for a micrometer, and a micrometer is 1 1,000 of a millimeter. So we're talking about very, very tiny wavelengths. Also, light moves at the speed of light, which means in one second, if it emanates from this position right here, in one second it will travel a distance of 300,000 kilometers. That's an enormous distance in one second. Now, all the while, the electromagnetic radiation will go up and down. It simply disturbs the electric field and the magnetic field in space. So, to get a feel for that, we know that the velocity of a wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So we can see that the frequency is equal to the velocity divided by the wavelength. And of course, with electromagnetic radiation, that's the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So let's see what would be the frequency of visible light that has a wavelength of 500 nanometers. Well, that would be equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for the speed divided by the wavelength of 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And that ends up being 6 times 10 to the 14th hertz, or cycles per second, or oscillations per second. That would be, let's see here, 10 to the 9th is billion, 10 to the 12th is trillion. That would be equal to 600 trillion cycles or oscillations per second. That's an enormously fast oscillation. That is such a high number. Imagine this for a moment. Let's take a thin sheet of paper like this. The thickness of a sheet of paper is about one-tenth of a millimeter. Now you can imagine if light travels past a sheet of paper, the thickness of it is not going to spend a lot of time traveling this very tiny distance of one-tenth of one millimeter at the enormous speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. But yet, in the time that it takes for light to travel this tiny little distance, 0.1 millimeter, it will have oscillated about 200 times. It will go up and down 200 times in the time that it takes, at the speed of 300,000 kilometers per second, to travel this tiny little distance of 0.1 millimeter, one-tenth of a millimeter. So you can see that electromagnetic radiation tends to have a very high frequency, oscillates at enormous frequency as it travels through space. Imagine that in one second it will have gone up and down 600 trillion times while it travels one second or 300,000 kilometers in that, dis in that, in that time. So this is kind of a, a new revelation for us when we think about the enormous high frequency of the oscillations of electromagnetic radiation. Of course, there's radiation such as radio waves and microwaves that have a slower uh, oscillation uh, frequency, still probably in the terms of thousands or millions of times per second. And all it is is simply a disturbance in the electromagnetic field. So if the electric field is disturbed in this direction, then the magnetic field will be disturbed in this direction as it travels through space. Again, remember the enormous number of times per second that, these, that the, field, the electric field and the magnetic field will go up and down or sideways like this. Now, not to be misunderstood, even though we draw the electric field like this and the magnetic field like this, we know that the magnetic field and the electric field are always perpendicular to each other. So as the electric field goes like this, the magnetic field goes like this, and that's how electromagnetic radiation goes through space. Now, what happens is that if I move this in this direction, notice that the electric field oscillations will be in different direction. So the direction of the electric field oscillations and magnetic field oscillations purely are a result of in which direction that object is oscillating. 
If the os oscillation is like this, then the electric field, of course, will be oscillating like this as well. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding that the electromagnetic radiation have wave-like properties, they have wavelengths, they have frequencies, and therefore we can then compare them to each other through the simple equation right here that the velocity or the speed of light of electromagnetic radiation is simply the product of the frequency times the wavelength, just like any other wave. And that hopefully gives us a better understanding yet. If you want to know more about electromagnetic radiation, keep watching and we'll keep trying to explain more and more about what E&M waves really are.